Hello, I'm Bobby Marset of Extreme Athletics. Today on this video, we will be covering everything from white to yellow belt. I hope this helps you on your journey to your black belt. First, we're gonna look at stances and break falls. The first stance we're gonna look at today is the horse stance. Have Dylan get in a horse stance. They call it a horse stance because it looks like you're kind of riding a horse. If I put imaginary horse here, you'd be holding onto the reins. That's where it got its name. The first thing I'm gonna be looking at today on his horse stance is his feet position. Most commonly mistake people make is they angle their feet out, way out here, and point them outwards. We don't want you to do that. We want to have your feet facing straight forward, so you're nice and strong. You want to keep a slight bend in your knees. You can go down as low as this. This is probably your lowest position. You don't want to go down into a squatting position. And if you can only squat, bend your knees a little bit, you're just looking to gain leg strength here and develop your power. And over time, sink your stance lower. Your hand position here wants to be up by your ribs here to develop your punching power. Eyes looking straight forward, back straight. Now there's the horse stance. The next stance we're going to look at is a half mooning stance. We'll use this later on in, the, in this DVD. You'll see the half mooning using, uh, being used. The thing I'm going to look at here, it's similar to a horse stance. Both feet facing straight forward. Knees are bent again. The biggest thing I want to explain here, let me get in front of Dylan, is you want to have your heel make a straight line all the way to your toes. All right, and this is gonna be used later on in the DVD. You'll see how it is used. Our last stance is a front stance. This is very similar to the half mooning stance. Our back leg is gonna be straight and locked, feet facing straight forward, front foot facing straight forward. Let me fix this on Dylan a little bit. Knee bent, elbows are in our same position, head position looking straight forward. And that wraps up kind of the stance series for white to yellow belt. Okay, next we're going to be covering our back break falls. The reason we teach you how to uh, break, break your fall is when we do takedowns, we like to start teaching it now so it helps to protect yourself. A couple pointers here. We're going to start from the laying down position. He wants to keep his head off the floor, looking at the knot of his belt. All right, hands up here, like in a cross position. He's going to break his fall by hitting his hands to the mat right by his hips. Nice and slow, Dylan. Okay, in his down position, he wants to be palm down. All right. And then making a V formation, so this hand should come in just a little bit here. So Dylan, can you do a couple? Ready? One, two, three. The next progression from here is we're going to sit up. He's going to put his elbows on his knees, his hands on his head. He's still going to keep his head tucked in. He's going to be rolling until this part of his back hits, and he's going to slap the mat all at the same time. Ready? Nice and slow motion. Bang. Just like that. Head is still off the thing. Wants to get a little bit more V formation. Come back up. Let's do three of them. Ready? One, two, three. Our next progression from there is from a squatting position. So Dylan will get up into a squatting position. Right here, same progression. Hands are up here. Head is tight. He's going to try to do this in slow motion. He will roll back, let his back touch, hit the mat. Bang. Just like that. Come back up. Still concentrating your head, not touching the mat. Ready? One. Right back up. Two. One more time, though. Three. <clears throat> and that is your bre back break fall series. Good. Good. The next series we'll be covering is punches from white to yellow belt. The first punch we're going to look at is called a front punch. So Dylan will come out from his, with his right hand and throw the front punch out. Biggest thing is wrapping your thumb on the outside. A lot of common mistake, many, especially with children, is they put their thumb on the inside and wrap it. All right. So I want that thumb on the outside. Tight, tight fist. Okay. And the next thing is when he throws his other one, he wants to recoil this one all the way back to his ribs. Go ahead, Dylan. Good. He throws it out just like that. Common mistake here too is they stay tight the whole time. There's a thing I want you to stay. You're loose. Your hand stays loose as he switches and throws it and snap. You have that little snap at the end. So this hand is staying loose. This one is staying loose until it gets to that point of the strike and then it tightens up. So this is what we call the front punch. The next strike is a thrust punch. He will come out and punches straight up and down. Fist is still the same, thumb is wrapped, everything is still the same. Loose until that explosion at the end to the tight and tightening up your muscles. Ready? Again, throw one, bang. One more, bang. The next punch, back punch. He's going to come out. This is just straight out from your ribs. It's not like an uppercut in boxing. It's a straight punch, wrist nice and straight, fingers are still wrapped. Still comp concept, loose tight, explosion at the end. Go ahead. Back punch. Good job. Good. The next strike is a hammer strike. 
He's gonna, this one's a little bit different. You wanna wanna bring that up in the initial position. So he's gonna bring it up behind his head like he's throwing a baseball or a football. He wants to keep the elbow tight in nice and back and he'll be coming down in a striking motion. Bang. Just like that, like he's hammering a big nail into the floor. One more time, done with the other side. Bring it down, bang. And another one, bang. Now he's gonna take the same strike. It's the same concept. He's gonna bring it up like he's throwing a football again. Here, now he's gonna throw it to the ribs, to the side. Your hand is upside down now when it strikes. You're striking with this surface. Again, another one. And again. Good. Now this one's the most complicated strike, this next one, called reverse hammer strike in, the, in this series. He's gonna bring his right hand to his opposite side, just like this, to his opposite ear. And then he's gonna strike out with the back part of his fist, here. And this would be more to the groin level, striking with this part, all right? So again, with the other hand, he's gonna bring it to his opposite side and strike out even with the knot of his belt in the center of his body, here. Most common mistake on this is people are striking out to the side, here. It's right to the center of your body. So let's see two of those again, Dylan. One, two, nice job. Now bring your hands back. Our next series is palm heel strike. He's gonna come out with a palm strike, just like that, striking with this surface of your hand. Fingers tight together. I always tell the kids, no spaghetti fingers. You don't want your fingers to look like that. So fingers tight together, striking with this. The next common mistake is when he throws the other one, is people keep their hands open back here. I want that hand closed. Your hand always returns in that closed position. Striking here. Let me see two of them, Dale. One, two. Okay, now we're gonna take it to the ribs. So when he strikes low, his finger's gonna be pointing out here. Just like that, same striking surface. He strikes with the other one. A common mistake here is people start widening out their strikes like this. You wanna keep it even with your own rib line. Here, so let's see two of those, Dylan. One, two. All right, and the last uh, palm heel strike is to the groin. So his fingers will be pointing down. Let's see one. Just like this, same striking surface, bringing that hand back closed. All right, let me see two of those, Dylan. One, two. And that concludes our striking series. Good, the next series we're gonna be covering is all the kicks from white to yellow belt. Um, first thing we're gonna talk about is stances. Um, so I'm gonna have Dylan take a slight step forward with his left leg. I tell the kids they wanna keep their hands up like they're talking on two telephones, just like this. That's where you wanna keep your hand position. Elbows in tight. You don't want your elbows out here, so you look like a seagull. All right, so you want your elbows in real tight, just like this. All right, there's four parts to every kick. The first part is chambering your knee up, just like this. The second part would be extending your leg to do the kick. The third part is chambering your knee back and then your step down. So there'll be four parts to all these kicks. The first kick we're gonna look at today is a front ball kick. Um, so Dylan's gonna come up and throw his front ball kick. I'm gonna hold his foot out for him here as we talk about it. He's gonna curl his toes back. He's hitting with the ball of his foot. So if he had a target here, I should see just this part hitting here. Not his heel, not his whole foot, just the ball of his foot. Curling no toe back. All right, that's a front ball kick. Then he will recoil and step down. The next step kick we're gonna look at is a front instep kick. He's gonna do the same thing. Just kick up, hitting with the top part of his foot, right here, just like where your shoelaces would be on your shoes. All right, this is called a front instep kick. He will return back, down. I'm gonna have him turn sideways on this next one because we're gonna talk about the side kick. He's gonna turn sideways. When he does his chamber, it's slightly different than a front kick. He's gonna give me his foot, we're gonna show it here. He wants to keep his hip, his knee, and his heel all at the same Part. To do that, you slightly got to turn your backside towards your opponent or striking surface. He's going to extend his leg out. When he extends it out, I'll move my hand. He wants to strike here with his heel. Toes slightly lower, the blade of your foot out, striking surface is the heel. He will recoil in the same way and then step down. All right. Our next one is we're going to turn backwards. It'll be a back kick. All right. So he's still going to do the same chamber. He's gonna look over his shoulder, whatever side he's kicking on, he's gonna extend his foot out, just like this. Same thing, heel, hitting with the heel. Dylan is looking over shoulder, so he can see his striking surface or his opponent. Then he'll recoil back and step it down. Good, let's face forward again, Dylan. All right, let's throw a front ball kick at full speed. Good, and one more time. Good, let's throw a front end step kick now. And again, excellent job. Good, let's turn sideways. Side kick, throw one, good, and again, go, good. and turn. Now let's throw a back kick now at full speed, back kick, good job. The next two kicks are probably the hardest kicks to learn and throw correctly. Um, they're more used for flexibility rather than a striking 
All right. It's going to be an outside crescent kick. So with his back foot, he's going to make a giant circle up and then return it back down. When he's up in this top position, let me just switch sides, he's going to throw his kick. When he gets to here, he wants to be hitting with the outside surface of his foot. And then keep the motion going and return it right back where it came from. He's really opening up his hip and working his hip flexibility. All right, let me see you one, Dill. Good. Now what he wants to do in the next one is the same thing as an inside crescent kick. So he'll throw his inside crescent kick, big circle in, and then back down. Now on this one, throw it up, Dill. I catch it. He wants to hit with this part, the inside of his foot. Return it back down, just like that. Let me see one, Dylan. And again, just like that. And that concludes our, our kicking series from white to yellow belt. The next series we'll be covering is the eight point blocking system. We'll start this in a horse stance. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're also gonna count these in Japanese. So your first one is number one, which is called Ishi. Dylan will throw Ishi. He's gonna come down in a circle of motion and block. Fists facing out, thumb tucked in, blocking with the outside surface of his arm. The scooping motion he wants to do from the outside is scooping down, then up, just like that. And then when we do knee, which is number two, it'll be the same thing, but with the opposite hand. Knee, bang. So one more time, is she, when he does is she nice and slow, he wants to go straight down. I'd rather prefer him to go straight down here, then circle up, bang, and blot. Knee, which is number two, and blot. Now he's going to return this hand. When he starts son, which is number three, he's going to come up almost like that hammer strike motion that we talked about earlier, like throwing a football. He's going to come across his body, blocking with the outside surface of his arm, going to the outside of his head. Here, he's going to return this one, bring up this one. This is she, which is number four, and he's going to block across outside of his hand, beyond his head. He's going to return this one. The next two are overhead blocks, which is go, which is number five in Japanese. Blocking surface here, biggest thing you want to think about, keep that surface like a roof of your house and a pitch. Here, blocking down so you don't hit yourself in the, in your, in the head. He's going to return this one to his side. Roku, which is number six, same thing, blocking down. Here, same pitch to his head. Return this one back. He's going to bring this one kind of similar to the reverse hammer strike. He's going to bring this one up to his opposite ear. This is C Chi, which is number seven. He's going to do a downward block. Still again, blocking with the outside of his hand, away from his body. Here, return this one, bring Hashi up to his opposite ear, block straight down, outside part. Okay, the difference between this and the reverse hammer is the placement of the hand. This is for the strike, this is for the block. So I'm gonna have Dylan go through them nice and slow as I count them out. Ishi, knee, noticing how he's returning his hand every time. San, Shi. Go, Roku, Sichi, Hashi. And that concludes our eight-point blocking system. Our next series we're going to cover is combinations. Combinations are defenses against punches. And the Yellow Belt series will be co uh, reviewing combination five, six, and seven. We'll start with number five combination. I'll have Dylan throw a punch at Sensei Michelle. Sensei Michelle's first thing is she wants to come around a corner almost, or shuffling her feet. So she was straight on here, she slid around the corner to block. She's keeping this one hand open, this is kind of like a safety valve. This is in case she misses that block, it bends the arm, it strikes. Here. This is a block you seen earlier, which was San, in the eight point blocking system. Alright, now from here she's going to rechamber that hand back to her ribs and throw a back punch to Dylan's face. All right. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to chamber our knee up. We're going to be throwing a side kick to the opponent's knee here. And our next step to end the, all our combinations, or majority of the combinations, is a cross and guard. She's going to cross his guard, foot in front, step it back out to an on guard stance. On her on guard stance, she wants to keep her feet level, similar to a horse stance. This hand protecting her lower body, this hand protecting her higher body, looking at her opponent. Let's see it at full speed. Good. Good, our next combination is number six. Dylan's gonna throw the punch. Sensei Michelle's gonna block across her body. Keeping her fingers tight together, no spaghetti fingers, other hand tucked in. Her next thing is a front kick, to, front ball kick to his midsection. Here, striking, chambering back, crossing in front, stepping out to her on guard position once again. Legs are in a straight line. Elbow here, hand tight, looking at her opponent. Let's see it at full speed. Excellent job. Good. And our last combination is combination number seven. So when Dylan throws his punch, the first thing Sensei Michelle is going to do is going to step to the outside. 
She's going to outside block here, scooping up, protecting this side. This other hand is going to come across to protect the lower body, just like this. Make a shelf under here or make a fist to, make, to close this off. She's going to pivot herself and throw a side kick to Dylan's knee, chambering. Side kick, cross in front. Same thing in our on guard position, looking at Dylan. Right back, let's see it at full speed. Go. Good. And that concludes our combination series. The next section we'll be covering is jiu-jitsu techniques. Jiu-jitsu techniques are any type of grab. We're going to look at grip defenses today, wrists and shirt grabs. So Dylan's going to grab Sensei Michelle. The thing we're going to do is we're going to focus on same side of the body. There are techniques where we're going to go across the body. For today, we're doing the same side of the body. So first technique is called wrist slap. She's going to grab her own gi with that hand. This it takes away his leverage or pull and keeps her tight. The next thing she wants to do is keep this elbow real tight to her body so there's no space. She's going to step this leg back similar to like if she was throwing a ball or something and palm that. Just like that right off on his wrist. So again, so grab, full speed, grab your shirt, pop it off. Good. The next technique is called the knee strip. The same thing. First thing that Sensei Michelle is going to do is she's going to take her opposite hand and post it on his shoulder. You want to keep this arm locked out, no bend to it. Kind of wants to be like a kickstand to a bike. This little straight thing can hold a lot of force back. This helps her for balance as well as if Dylan strikes, it's harder for him to strike with that side. All right. Her next thing is common thing and mistake here people make is they pull their own arm up. We want to keep this hanging down and let the opponent pull you down. She's going to use her opposite knee, bring it across the body, put her shin on it. She's going to drive down with her knee and pull up with her arm and strike through. Good. Let's see it full speed. Good. The next one is the most simplest one. It's called circle. All you want to do on this one is when you have a bigger, stronger opponent trying to hold you somewhere, is like try to fake them that you're going one way and they're going to try to pull you back and you continue that circle going and release your grip. You can go back to grab or you can just release your grip. Let's see, just to release the grip. And just get your hand out and that's fine either way. So let's see at full speed. She's going to fake and go to the circle, to the re-grab or just to release her hand. The next in the wrist grab series is a two-handed strip. Most common mistake here, this person opponent is trying to drag you somewhere. Most people try to pull back. That is a, a thing you don't want to do. You want to go to, towards them. So Sensei Michelle's first thing she's going to do when Dylan pulls is she's going to just step, grab her own fist over the top, and she's going to pull it off like on a hinge, like she's almost elbowing him in the belly. And it's going to come loose. All right, so let's see this full speed. Bang. The next grip we're going to look at is actually a shirt grab. Dylan's going to grab her shirt. We're going to look at that same slap motion that we did with the wrist slap. She's going to grab underneath here, elbow tight. She's going to pick up her leg and hit, the th hit his wrist and pop it off. Nice job. Let's see at full speed. Grab her shirt, pop. The next one we're going to look at is the same thing, but it's called a two-handed strip. She's going to grab it with both hands. She's not trying to move Dylan, she's trying to move herself. She's going to hold Dylan in one place and move her shirt away from his hand by stepping back. Good. Most common mistake is people try to move the opponent. All right, so let's see at full speed. Good. And our last one in our grip is the most complicated one, um, but it's, I think it's the funnest one to do. It's called bow and arrow. The same side he grabs on, she's going to grab his wrist. The opposite hand is going to grab any piece of fabric on her clothing, loose. Okay, relatively close, but you want to keep it slack to it. She's going to step back in slow motion, and she's going to pull her own shirt out of his wrist. Not trying to pull his hand off her shirt, pull her shirt out of his wrist, out of his grip. Good. Let's see bow and arrow in full speed. Good. And that concludes our jiu-jitsu technique series. The next series we're going to cover is called pinons and katas. What we're going to cover in this is half mooning. We're actually going to do a kata, but it's a half mooning, which is a preparation to learning katas. So we're going to have Dylan get into a front stance, which we saw earlier in the DVD. Back leg straight, feet facing forward, knee bent. What he wants to do in this in half mooning is the way he's going to create a half moon is this back foot, stay right there Dylan, this back foot's going to slide up, touch his foot, and then he's going to return back to a front stance with this other foot forward. Let's see one, Dylan. Excellent. One more. Good job. Good. Return back. The next thing we're going to cover is half mooning with punches. This is a little more complicated. All right. The thing I want you to remember on this, the biggest thing is establishing your stance before you throw a strike. So Dylan's going to do that same half mooning technique. He's going to establish his stance. Go ahead, Dylan. Once he gets to the stance, that's when he throws his punch. Bang. 
So he doesn't do the two at the same time. A common mistake, let's see one Dylan, a common mistake. It will throw it and throw the punch at the same time. So their hand will be doing a circular motion with their foot. That's why you want to establish that stance. Return back Dylan, we're going to throw two full speed. So he will establish his stance, throw his strike. Go. Go. Here, punch straight forward. Hips and shoulders are going forward. Another common mistake is people tend to do this. I want your shoulders staying forward, eyes looking forward, hips forward. Not of your belt, center of your body. Return back. The next thing we're going to look at is blocks with out of this half winning stances or series. All right, so he's going to be here. It's the same thing. We're going to do with all the blocks. We're just going to throw two of them today, is she and knee. But he's want to establish his stance again, then start his block. Not start his block and then his uh, at the same time as he does his footwork. So again, he's going to do the stance, establish his stance. Now, is she? she? Good. Knee, same thing. Establish his stance. Knee. Good. Let's see at full speed. On my count. Ready? Is she? Knee. Excellent job. And that concludes our half morning series. This concludes our, our video from White to Yellow Belt. I hope it was helpful to you and you can use it as a training tool on your road to your black belt. For more information, visit ExtremeAthleticsMaine.com.